Hello Algebra, I just wanted to make this video available to you so that you could see exactly uh, how to do this linear regression we did in class, because uh, I know it's a lot of steps and uh, it can be easy to forget. So uh, the first thing we have to do is put in the data, the x's and the y's, the data points. Uh, so to get to the place where you can do that, um, you go to stat here, okay, so you press that button and you go to uh, edit, you just press enter. And you can see I already have the data entered that we used at the beginning of the lesson. Um, this is the what the the body length and the wingspan of those birds. Um, and you, know, you just go in the the list one will be your x and list two will be your y. And uh, if you want to make it simple on yourself, always do that. List one is x, list two is y. Um, you can do, use other lists, but then there's an extra step there. So uh, there we go, x's and y's. So we have all that entered. Okay. Um, let's look at the graph of that. We don't see anything. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. The first thing is, um, let's go look at those, that list again. So go to stat and edit again. It starts at 5, goes, let's see, these are x values. Let's see, 5, 9, 12, 16, 18, 19, 23. So the smallest value you see is 5, then 9, and so on. Uh, the point five seven is there, 9, 22, 23, 63. So imagine those are the, the points that you're going to plot on a graph, right? So say we're going to go to plot 19, 51. Let's look at the graph. Let's go on the x axis to 19. Now this only goes to 10. 19 is way off the, the thing, way off the screen right now. So we've got to get the screen to show the right values. So let's go back to that list and, and think what, what x values and what y values do we want. So we've got x values ranging from 5 to 23. 5 is the smallest, 23 is the biggest. So if we want to see those values, uh, then we want to go into the window and make the, the x values in the window. The window would be this graph here. So we're going to change the window, the x values, to fit that 5 to 23 range. So uh, the minimum x, the smallest x, I'm going to make it 4, just so that it's, you know, 5 is not right on the edge of the screen. And then here I'll go all the way to 24 for the biggest x. Okay, and now we gotta do, uh, look at the y values. What kind of y values do we want? Let's go back and look at that, the lists. All right, so we go from seven to 63. Yeah, 63 looks to be the biggest. So if we go, we go from a range of seven to 63. Um, so let's go in here and make the y values go from 6 to 64, just so we get everything on there. Okay, So um, we're still not going to see the graph, but at least we're looking in the right place. So we should see a bunch of points here, um, but we don't see them. So here's the reason why. It's because we just haven't turned those points on. If we turn the points on, then we will see points plotted at 12, 18, 16, 41, and so on. Okay, So we look on the graph. We, we can't see the, the points. We've changed the window, but now we need to turn the points on. And for that, we need to go to this screen, the Y equals screen, and go up and press Enter. And now you can see plot one is highlighted, okay? So that would be a scatter plot, okay? Um, and we can, let's see, if we, go, if we hit the second button and, and, and hit stat plot, then we can see what plot one is. Plot one is on. Uh, it's, um, let's see, I don't know if I hit enter, yeah. So it's on, it's a scatter plot. It's not a connected line plot. It's not a uh, bar graph or histogram. It's not a box and whisker. It's not anything like that. Um, the X's are gonna come from list one. The Y's are gonna come from list two. And we'll make the marks look like little squares. You could do crosses or tiny dots, but we'll just do little squares, okay? So everything's ready to go. And there those points are. Okay, it looks a lot like that graph we saw at the beginning of class. Okay, so there we go. We have all those uh, points turned on. If you want to rewind and rewatch all that, then uh, feel free. Okay, so now we have to find that line of best fit. So we could you know, kind of see this line um, is some, somewhere like this. It looks about this steep. It's definitely got a positive slope. Uh, other than that, um, we're not so sure what the, the very best line is, but there is one very best line 
Uh, it's called the V line of best fit. To find it, we're gonna do some linear regression. Okay, so to do linear regression, I'm just gonna go out to the main screen where you would do uh, all your regular calculations. And we are going to do a linear regression. So we're gonna go back into stat and we're gonna do a calculation. It's gonna do some, some calculating, some computing. And we're gonna do a linear regression. You can see that there's a quadratic regression. Okay, that's a different kind of, they've got a linear function, that'd be a line. A quadratic re regression would be a quadratic function, a cubic regression, a quartic regression. I think we have logarithmic regression. Um, we've got linear regression again in just a different form. Uh, natural log regression, exponential regression, power regression, logistic regression, sine. So all sorts of different regressions. That means it just takes your data and it makes it fit to the best uh, function of that kind. Okay, so we're gonna do a linear regression. I'm gonna hit enter now. So this guy's great. It's already set up to um, take the x's from list one, the y's from list two, uh, and uh, just give you that equation. So the equation is y equals ax plus b. So that a would be 3.11, so your slope is 3.11, and b is negative 10.33. Okay, so the, the y-intercept is negative 10.33. This r squared and this r, um, don't worry about that. It's kind of an indication of, of how well correlated your data is, but don't worry about that. Um, so this is our equation. We just write y equals 3.11x minus 10.33, and we would have it. And we could go in here. This is where we can enter that. Uh, we can enter the equation at y equals, and we could put mx plus b like that. But um, there's a much easier way. So let's, let's make it easier on ourselves. So we're going to do that linear regression again. We're gonna do that linear regression again, okay? Um, and let's see if this works. I think if I do that, um, um, so maybe not with the arrow. Let's see if it does that. Okay, so it should have, yeah, it did. It just put it right there into the Y1. Okay, so again, what all I did there is I did the linear regression, follow the steps for doing the linear regression, and after the linear regression, I put this y1 here. Let me show you where I got that y1. That means put it into y1, put it right there. Okay, so here's where I got it. I got to there's this variables, okay, y variables, the functions, okay, and there it is, hit enter right there. So by selecting that y1, I'm telling the linear regression to be put into the y1. If I press enter, it just does the same thing again. So let's put it into y1. Now I can look at the graph, and there's my linear regression. Um, you can see that's about what we would expect, but that line is the best line. And the thing we can do with this line is we can uh, predict things about um, what the data will look like at, at different um, values of x. So um, remember that this data was saying that for this uh, body length of a bird, we'll see this wingspan, right? And if we look at that, that data, um, you know, if, if, if you have a body length of 60, 16, then we'll have a wingspan of 41. Well, um, what about a wingspan of 17? That's, that's what we use these lines of best fit for. What if I had a wingspan of 17, then, then, or sorry, a body length of 17, what would be my wingspan? Um, well, we can use this line of best fit to kind of make a good guess. Okay, so how do we do that? We can hit the trace button. The trace uh, just puts um, a cursor right on a function or on a dot. If I press the down arrow, it'll go actually onto the line. And now as I move left and right, I'm moving along the line perfectly, okay? And I can press, uh, I can enter 17 for x. I hit enter, if, if x is 17, if my body length is 17, my wingspan will be 42.55. Um, or if I have a really long body length, like uh, 30, then my wingspan, it's not on the screen, let's see. Uh, we'd have to adjust the screen, so I don't know. Let's, let's just say like uh, a wingspan of That's pretty big. We should have about a wingspan of 
a body length of 20 should give us a wingspan of 51.88. Okay, so there are all the, the steps that it takes to, to take data and uh, put it into list one and list two, do the linear regression, put it into Y1, and uh, use that line of best fit that you now have to predict uh, a, a data point inside the, the data that you already have. If you're predicting a point within the data points that you already have, that's called interpolation. And if we go outside, usually like bigger values, you know, like we'll look at some data for maybe uh, a certain number of years and then we want to see if there's a trend and see what will happen in you know, 10 years from now, what will we expect to see. That's called extrapolation. We're going to extrapolate the information uh, from that data. Um, so yeah, that's about it. I just wanted you to be able to go back and watch this and, um, and be able to follow those steps. So uh, let me know if you need any help or if there's anything confusing. Uh, thanks for watching.